Hi there, my name is Carson, and I'm working on a top-down shooter multiplayer mobile game. It's looking pretty cool right now, but the level design leaves much to be desired. In this devlog, I'm going to make the first map for the game, a desert-themed PvP arena. I hope you like the look of this orange rock, because there's going to be a lot more of those soon. Before I could get started on that though, I needed to figure out the layout of the map. I'm pretty experienced in this department, thanks to my serial indecisiveness. After hours of constant erasing, I finally came up with something that I liked. I drew this in a car on the way to Colorado, and when I was done, I showed it to my sister who was sitting beside me. She said, That's it? How did it take you so long to draw a jumble of rocks? It is not just a jumble of rocks. Each rock has been wonderfully and fearfully made, meticulously crafted by hand, and thoughtfully placed at a precise angle and location to individually fulfill a very specific, critical need, together forming a tapestry of just multiplayer warfare unlike anything the world has ever seen! I wanted something balanced, but not clearly symmetrical. I was thinking in terms of the tried and true three lane system. This is a format most AAA Team Deathmatch maps follow. By the way, the map is made for Team Deathmatch, probably 5v5. My three lanes are here, but really there's four because you can go through the building. Having separate lanes can make things feel a bit less chaotic because you know enemies can generally only attack from one direction, and it just gives a better sense of direction and flow through the map. This center part of the map is where I'm hoping most of the encounters will be, and the middle lane is probably going to be the most contested. Some other things to consider are protecting the spawn locations, providing cover without making things too cluttered or claustrophobic, and using bottlenecks to create choke points. Basically, it's just a jumble of rocks. Now, to actually get this in the game. The first thing I did was add an image into Unity so I could get a feel for scale, and then I started modeling the border in Blender. I can't think of a good way to have borders or barriers in a desert environment, so I'm sticking to rocks. I've had this image of a sandy canyon environment in my head for a while now, so that's kind of what I'm trying to recreate. My previous rock looked like this without shaders, so I decided to do some research to see if I could do a little bit better. After watching a few YouTube videos, I learned about the knife, bisect, and bevel tools, which became my best friend. I even threw up some references in the sky, which was super helpful. Once I had a decent chunk done, I started duplicating rocks that I had already made and tweaking or rotating them a little bit so that it wasn't so obvious. Much to my surprise, I finished the whole border in pretty much one afternoon. I did try out some other more realistic colors, but for some reason I'm still in love with this bright orange. Now that I had passed what seemed like the biggest hurdle, I was able to move on to... more rocks. By this point, I was a rock modeling machine. And you know what? I was feeling pretty good because I was actually making art that didn't make me want to barf. These squares on the map here are meant to be crates, by the way. So I made a crate and plopped some into the scene to finish up the main parts of the layout. I'm missing a building here, but for some reason I decided to ignore that until the end. Now that I had a rough draft of the layout, it was time to add some details. I started with a little border for each of the rocks. This is meant to be sand built up on the edges. It's subtle, but it does make the rocks feel a bit more grounded in the environment. I also added some little rocks here and there, in little nooks and crannies and such. All these little objects don't have colliders, by the way, and hopefully that is clear with the darker color. I have heard in more places than one that darker colors look like they're more in the background or something. Then I started modeling a dead bush. Which ended up looking decent from a distance. And same thing with this cactus. I'm pretty proud of this little plant thing. 
I was halfway done with the second cactus when I remembered that I had seen a few desert asset packs while I was looking at references. And what do you know, there were a couple of good low poly desert props available for free on the Unity Asset Store. These included things like skulls, more cacti, little plants, and yeah, that was pretty much everything useful. I was a little hesitant to download assets like this, especially since it wouldn't be terribly difficult for me to model myself, but I was already like 6 months behind on this devlog, and I'm an 18 year old solo developer trying to compete with Supercell, so I cut myself some slack. I've been trying to add a bit of texture to the sand, because it looks a little bland right now. You can see that I added some hills, and that's a good start, but it still isn't enough. I came across a picture of this game called Blood Roots, and I really like the art style. Looking at their sand, you can see they use abstract shapes with different colors to add some texture without losing that cartoony, stylized look. So drawing inspiration from that, I quickly made some polygons and started adding them to the scene. I went through many iterations trying to get this right. For a while, it looked a bit too messy, but after reducing the opacity quite a bit, switching to a gradient, and doing some careful layering, it ended up looking really nice actually. I mean, look at the difference it makes. I made a tire, it's a pretty cool tire. I wanted to make the environment more military-esque, so I was looking at military props online to figure out how exactly I might do that, and well well well, more asset packs. I searched for low poly military props on the Unity Asset Store, and there actually wasn't anything free for me to steal, so sad. But I did see this, which gave me an idea. Nice. These barriers were just what I was looking for, creating a more military base slash warzone feel and breaking up the monotony of rocks and the rocks and the other rocks. All these assets fit right in with my art style, all I have to do is add a tune shader. I had to scale up the barriers quite a bit to make them head height. Which actually made me think about adding a cover system where you can crouch behind waist high cover or stand up and shoot over it. But I was worried about people camping behind them too much. I also removed some of the plants and other little details because things were getting too cluttered and messy. Continuing with the militarification, I made some little ammo boxes or supply boxes, some sort of box, and scattered those around. At the very least, this adds a bit more color into the mix. Alright, here we go. It was time to tackle the long-awaited building mechanic. And no, not that building. Just like this building. Right now, it's a little hard to fight people inside of a building, so I need to make the roof disappear when the player enters. I made the roof start to fade away as the player gets close to the building so that you can see what's going on inside before you fully enter. This way, you can also see in from the side of the building, but you have to be pretty much right up against it. I thought about adding windows so people inside the building could shoot out, but that seemed a little unfair. I may still do it though, I'm not sure yet. The buildings are intended to be in advantageous position, just maybe not an OP position. For inside the building, I kind of wanted to add some different details like bunk beds or something to contribute to the story, but there really isn't much space in here and bunk beds wouldn't provide great cover, so I just added some normal props inside. By this point, I still had no idea what I was going to do for the other building, which is why I'd been putting it off for so long. Desert themed buildings are really just, uh, sand buildings, which is kind of boring. I was planning on maybe making the walls orange rock, kind of like I did in the 2D version, but then I decided to go the military route and made this green thing, which is supposed to be a tent. A very stiff, bulletproof tent. It looks pretty good, so that's what it will be for the foreseeable future. One thing that was bothering me was, the map is enclosed in a circle of rock, with no plausible entrance or exit. The environment reminded me of a stone quarry, so I decided to lean into this idea and add mine shafts at the spawn locations. This way, the entrance into the canyon could be through the mine shafts going into the mountain. Now that I think about it, calling this a stone quarry doesn't really make sense, since you wouldn't need a mine shaft to mine the stone. So that kind of throws a wrench in my plans of calling this map quarry. Maybe it'll have to be canyon, or mines, or desert. Tell me what you think I should call it in the comments. My friend had the idea of making the mineshafts teleport you to the other side of the map, so I went ahead and added those. 
Not entirely realistic, but neither is seeing everyone through walls. I'm hoping it won't make things too chaotic and ruin the lane isolation I talked about. I'll have to see with playtesting. I do like the idea of each map having a special feature. I also added barriers in front of the other mineshafts because I don't want people thinking they can teleport into the other team's spawn. To tie everything together, I added some barrels and tools. Maybe I got them from another asset pack. Maybe I didn't. That made me want to add in some of the weapons I modeled in the last video. Now hopefully it seems like a military base set up in a stone quarry. Just a few finishing touches here. Well, actually, this change is a teeny weeny bit important. See that? That is a problem. And also this. I've been afraid of trying to fix this because I've ran into problems like this before and normally the solution is not pretty. My first instinct was to do a tiny little ray cast that would prevent the player from moving if they were up against a wall. Actually I used a sphere cast which is a thick boy ray cast. This mostly works but unfortunately there are still a few places I found where it failed. Not to mention, it feels really clunky because instead of sliding against the wall, the player stops completely until they turn enough that the raycast is no longer triggered. Thankfully, I decided to google the issue and found a couple random settings that I needed to change. These apparently reduce vibrations, which were wiggling my guy straight through giant boulders. This is why I love Unity. Well, now I don't even need that clunky raycast. The dashing is a slightly different problem, and that still wasn't fixed. When the player does a dash, the character moves to a target point a certain distance away. Sometimes this target point is inside of a rock, which causes issues where the collider just decides to take the day off. I thought fixing this would be easy, I just did a sphere cast in the dive direction and set the target to the contact point if it hits anything. Then I proceeded to bash my head against the rocks for 10 minutes and, oh, great, I found a spot where it doesn't work. 99% is not good enough. God could figure it out. Why can't you? If there's a way to get through walls, little Timmy will find a way to exploit it. Maybe that's how we can tell we aren't living in a simulation. Nobody has figured out how to clip through walls. Anyway, I think a lot of my problems are being caused by the fact that I'm using mesh colliders. When the rock face is at an angle, this causes issues, and also when there's these sharp wedges. After a whole lot of fiddling, I gave up and decided to disable the mesh colliders and outline the entire map in box colliders. Box colliders are generally a lot more reliable, and they'll be perfectly perpendicular to the floor. After spending probably 30 minutes trying to squeeze myself through every inch of the map, I was finally satisfied that you could no longer dip out of my game and travel the Unity Void. And then I added footsteps. They aren't actually being placed under the feet, just spawning at a fixed interval, but I think it looks convincing enough. I'm using an object pool system that I made early on, so I don't have to kill performance by constantly instantiating footsteps. Instead, I have a pool of deactivated footsteps that I reactivate when needed. Now as I was playing, I realized that I needed to switch the camera view if the player spawns at the top of the map, so that players are always running upward toward the enemy spawn no matter what side they start on. This came with some unforeseen difficulties, but it is now working. Here I spawned on top of the map, but I still walk forward because the camera has been flipped. Finally, I got over my trauma from all the rock modeling I had done previously, and I started working on thickening up the outer part of the map. I didn't actually model anything new here, I just duplicated some of my old rocks, scaled them up, and changed the order. Alright, I'm really happy with how this map turned out, especially when compared to the last version. I also think this helped me develop the art style of the game a lot further. Now I have a roadmap of sorts to follow when creating levels in the future. It also gives me something to match the UI with. Besides visuals, it's hard for me to tell if the map layout is good or not without human players. My only concern is that it could be too small, particularly on the vertical axis. Hopefully it won't need more than a few tweaks. I'd like to start some actual playtesting very soon, I just need to polish a few things up first. I think I'm going to work on the main menu, class creation, and overall game loop next, and then I should be at a place where I'm just trying to add as much content as fast as I can. More maps, more weapons, more characters. The boss also need an overhaul. They aren't able to dive, switch weapons, work as a team. I should probably fix that in the next video. 
but I have a feeling it's going to be complicated. I'd really like to get a devlog out every other week, so visit the comment section below and feel free to give a like if you want to motivate me. Suggestions and constructive criticism are always welcome. Subscribe if you want to follow my progress. Also, you can follow the Instagram account below if you want to get updates in between videos. See you next time.